today we are going to use the merely magical thermodynamic powers of all three of our main ingredients to make a delicious candy that's easy and quick. So these are the tools of the trade. If you're making the single serving one like I am right now, you'll need a fork for stirring, a spatula, a bowl, measuring spoons, and if you intend not to eat it directly out of the bowl, a jar to stir it in. I'm just going to put that jar aside. So, the ingredients are cocoa powder, peanut butter, optionally you can use flavoring, you can generally use any candy flavoring will do, and the final ingredient, the fantastically thermodynamic coconut oil. Now, as you can see, this coconut oil is very liquid right now because it has been on average over 75 degrees Fahrenheit in my house. I don't like it, but I don't have an air conditioning because it only gets this hot for one or two days out of the year. Be that as it may, I do not need to heat up the coconut oil because of this. Now, I use a peanut butter that does separate into peanut butter and oil, so I keep it in the refrigerator. If you do keep your peanut butter in the refrigerator, you should get it out Get out the, the amount you'll need a few hours beforehand and let it soften. If you don't keep your peanut butter in the refrigerator, you can just use it as is. But measure out four teaspoon tablespoons of peanut butter. Or if you're making a larger recipe, measure out the one and one third cup of peanut butter. Two. Three. And one slightly larger because this is number three, we're slightly smaller. Four. Exact measurements are not strictly necessary in this, but you want to get it rather close because you're using the properties of the coconut oil to hold it together smoothly. Hooey, I should have scooped out the cocoa powder before I scooped out the peanut butter. Oh well. I'm just going to grab a clean spoon. I don't want to take time to clean the one, two tablespoons cocoa powder. In this you can add two tablespoons, to, I'm sorry, one teaspoon of honey, or you can add stevia, you can add sugar. You can add a mashed up banana. I've done that before. Mashed up banana goes really well in this fudge recipe. The, the trick is that you're using coconut oil as a base, not milk. And so you, that's why it's called fudge in a jar. You have to store it in a jar because unlike normal fudge, it won't hold its shape. Okay, now time to add the coconut oil. For this ingredient, you can substitute butter or margarine. But, that will give a very different flavor to it. So you want to be careful about that. I'm going to put in... I don't like much vanilla flavoring. I'm three or four drops, or one-eighth of a teaspoon. Now, just mash that up. Now, I am going to give you a fantastic display of self-control. The fudge in a jar is done, and I am going to actually put it in the jar and not eat it immediately, so I can have it for tomorrow. Okay.
And there you have it. Fudge in a jar, one serving. Once you can put it in the refrigerator to make it a little firmer, and later in the year it will be much firmer naturally. But as it stands now, it's just utterly delicious. Fudge in a jar. To store the larger recipe, I would suggest getting two pint jars because technically it should fit in one pint jar, but it always seems to overflow when I tried it that way. Bon appetit!